Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. We're getting going on a new project here today. Uh, I have here a lefty um, L ESP, sorry, uh, lefty ESP uh, seven string that's been sent to me by one of my viewers, uh, and now one of my customers, for a paint job. So when I received this one, it had this stain job on it. Obviously, somebody has already taken the, uh, the finish off of it. They've stained it. Uh, it has some minor issues with it, most notably some significant gouging in here. So if you're trying to take the paint off your guitar, you'll note that that's kind of the most difficult place to get at. And obviously, whoever was taking the paint off this guitar realized that and kind of tried some more uh, aggressive techniques by the look of it and got some significant gouges in there. So I've got a couple different kinds of filler in there. Actually, you might see the, uh, the two different colors, mostly wood filler and also some uh, icing, which is a, an auto body filler, a fine auto body filler usually used over something like Bondo to fill in the smaller um, issues that that leaves behind. So we've got that and the neck. Now the neck is all, it's taped up right now. I've taped up everything other than the face of the headstock, which has that same stain on it. The rest of it was sealed uh, and then sanded back, but it's all bare wood color. What we're gonna try to do, here, here's the plan. We're going with a kind of a galaxy paint job on the guitar itself. So it's gonna be predominantly black uh, on the face of it. And I realize it's upside down here, but on the face of it, we're gonna have um, kind of a black silhouette of a forest tree line and then a galaxy style paint job in I believe blue and purple I don't have the reference picture in front of me but it's gonna be blue and purple I'm gonna throw some pearlescent paint in there some sparkle to really make it pop and I'm gonna do a very small version of that galaxy portion on the headstock as well this is what the what the client has, has asked for and then that's all gonna be gloss <coughs> and then on the back of the headstock and the neck what we're going for it, I'm not sure what we're going to end up doing there. It's going to be black as well. Ideally, I'm going to sand back uh, the sealer and get that dyed black and then go over it with an oil finish. However, if that looks like it's going to be too much of a hassle, um, the client has basically said, like, I, it, we've agreed it's not worth paying me to sand this thing for, you know, hours. So I'm going to be just painting that black and going with a satin finish. We try to avoid a gloss on the back of the neck because it makes it harder for your hand to move quickly. So it's more difficult to play fast if you've got that. But also it's nice to have a little bit of contrast and it's pretty easy to do, particularly when you've got a bolt on neck like this. So, so far, and I realize this is a lot of talking, I'm just trying to get you the, you know, the gist of what the project is. So far what I've done is I've, I've gone through, I've patched that with that filler. I've sanded this all back with 320 grit. I sprayed it with a couple coats of Bellin's vinyl sand air vinyl sealer to make sure that's all good and sealed, which it is at this point. So now I'm going to go over it with some 400 grit paper to prep it. Blech, sorry, having some trouble here. Some 400 grit paper to prepare it for the next, basically the paint. And I'm going to do the same with the headstock here. And the next thing that we're going to use is the dark sealer from Auto Air. So I'm going to be doing my airbrush work, my paint color work with an automotive acrylic made by Auto Air. And then we're going to go over it with a, uh, an Omni PPG uh, polyurethane and then we'll polish. So yeah, that's it. Uh, you can watch me do this part. I might do a voiceover to make sure that you're kind of keeping up with what I'm, what, what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I'm going to sand it, clean it, and then we're going to spray it. So let's get started. All right, so like I said, I'm just sanding this down with some 400 grit paper, getting it all ready to go so that the uh, sealer is nice and flat and the paint's gonna stick. And then we're gonna move in with our sealer dark from Auto Air to, uh, to kind of set up our black base or background there. So obviously I'm gonna clean the dust off, go in and spray a couple coats of this black. I'm just speeding through this because it's all pretty straightforward stuff. You've seen me do this in other tutorials. Um, if you haven't, I have other tutorials on this. So I'm just using a touch-up gun to spray this part. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to apply, just thin coats. And then I'll just gently scuff that down to make sure that everything's, you know, a nice smooth surface to work on. I've got my stencil on here. It's just kind of to 
black out the part where the trees are going to be. It's not actually the shape of them, but it's, you know, something close to build off of. And then I'm, the galaxy kind of had some, you know, some variation in color, obviously some areas that almost look uh, brighter because there are so many stars in them in the, in the uh, photo. So I'm kind of going in and putting in those background areas and fleshing out a couple of the details, but not really just, just kind of putting in that background to begin with. And what I end up doing here is going back and forth, you know, four or five times between my white and my transparent colors to knock it back so that I kind of build up that depth. Because obviously, I mean, you're dealing with an absurd amount of, of depth when you have a galaxy. There's all that distance there to cover and the stars are at different distances from you. So I go in, I build up the, the general shape of it the first time here, and, uh, and then I knock it back with some transparent blue. And I go in and do it again. You'll see me do this a couple times and then come in with my more purplish candies after. I'm using a, a stencil here, a texture stencil to get some of that. And then for the, the spots, the small spots for the stars, some of them I'm doing, you know, the normal way with the airbrush. And the others, what you'll see me do is I'll, I'll pull the pin back. And you can't really tell from the video necessarily. But I'll pull the pin back without air so that the, the, um, the needle gets some paint on it some white paint and then I hit the air and it spits that white paint on there and makes little spots basically that end up looking like stars I got a little extra white in a couple places so I went back in with the black and now I'm coming in with the white again to build up some more depth and put in some of those areas that are going to be closer everything that's already been coated in blue will likely be coated in blue again which will push it back even further and when you look at the finished product it'll make it look further away so I'm kind of going layer by layer, putting in the stuff that's furthest away first and then putting in the stuff that's closer. Here I'm doing that spitting technique. You can see it's kind of just shooting little little spots on there. And I'm pushing those back again with some blue. And I'll come in again and, uh, and pull the stuff to the front that I need with the white. So I'm skipping little bits of the video here with the filming because this video is already pretty long and there's, there's really not a lot to it. It's a fairly straightforward paint job. It just takes a little bit of time to build it all up because of how many times you're going to layer it back and forth. So I believe now I'm coming in with... Oh, is that the same blue? Nope, this is what I thought. Yeah, I'm coming back in with uh, a blue that has a little bit more purple in it. And that's because the, uh, you know, the galaxy is supposed to have some purple in it, but I don't want to go with a full purple because it's going to look, you know, crazy, unrealistic. Uh, not that this image is necessarily something you would see from from Earth anyway. It's kind of an overlay of a, a silhouette on top of something you'd see from a telescope. But I did that purple, and now I'm just quickly going in and putting in the, uh, the kind of sunset effect that was behind the trees in the reference picture, using white to bring it to the front, and then those candy colors to push it back again. You can't just spray transparent colors right onto black. They won't show up, so you have to build it up with some white or mix some white into your paint if you're using a semi-transparent. This part's very straightforward as well, uh, although it does require some, some trigger control. I'm just going in and kind of freehanding in those uh, tree branches to make those trees look realistic. Obviously, I've got this sped up quite a bit, but yeah, pretty straightforward stuff. This is just straight black to create that silhouette. And I'm trying to keep the edges reasonably hard, which is why I'm so close there. I need hard edges and I need some detail. You get that by having your airbrush closer to the piece, essentially, and being more careful on the trigger. Here I am spraying the 2K clear coat. I'm not going to make you watch all of that, partially because I go ahead and get my body directly in the way here, so you can't really see it anyway. But you've seen me clear coat before. If you haven't, uh, I've got several videos where I do that. Once the clear coat is cured for a week or so, I go in and sand it all down flat to 5000 grit to make it easy to polish so I can get my nice high gloss out of it. So going in with my dual action orbital, that's a 5000 grit sanded finish right there, which is basically a satin finish. You can see the reflection of my face in it. It's incredibly smooth and it makes it much easier to go in and polish. I go in with my, uh, my compound, my rubbing compound, my machine polish, and then my extra fine machine polish. I, I use 3M polishes for this particular job and I ended up just going with a satin finish for the back of the neck. So here's the finished product. You can see it's got a nice shine to it. It's got kind of some depth. The stuff that's lighter looks closer to the front. Darker looks further back because it's pushed back under all those layers of candy. 
So the customer was very happy with this one, and that obviously makes me happy. He sent some pictures. Here you go with those. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please give it the thumbs up, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good one.